Hi guys, in this tutorial we're going to cover how to add a new entity type in FXGL 11 games. So this, these steps are applicable to any FXGL game that currently is in the FXGL games repository. So the repository is here, this is the link, the link will be in the description. Once you created a fork or a um, created a clone, regardless of how you um, get the code onto your machine, then you can um, in IntelliJ ID click File, New, Project from Existing Sources, then select FXGL Games, the top level directory, and then just proceed through the wizard. You will need to select um, Maven when ID will ask you to uh, import something, and then um, there are two checkboxes, import Maven projects automatically and recursively. So these are the two checkboxes that you'll need to tick. And then select JDK 11. You should see after all is done, something like that, a list of FXGL games. To run the game, uh, just go to app. There's typically one class that is named uh, something not app and right click and run should be simple as so that's kind of how you can build and run any fxgl um, game using intellij id i'm assuming other ids are similar so you want to add something new into the game how might you do that well first step is to go and find something type class entity type or some Mario type in this case for example these are the types of objects or entities that are present in the game if you want to add a new type then you can do so by just adding something like this since I'm not going to save my change I'm just going to call it temp type for temporary type this is step one. Step two is to go to the factory class. This is the class that contains all of the code to spawn entities, to construct them. Typically, this is the only class that contains code for spawning entities, since it's much easier to um, give a class just one responsibility. So once you've done that, uh, you can spawn a new type, for example, temp type. Uh, the method name doesn't matter. The type of the entity is going to be temp type, which I've created in step one. Um, other things are related to view and various components that an entity has. So in this case, I want the view to be a rectangle, say brown. I don't have a graphics for it, uh, but this can easily be replaced by a different texture. So I'm just essentially going through um, some basic steps in case you missed them in previous videos. Hitbox is fine. It's going to read from the spawn data. So width and height are the parameters that I will need to pass in when I'm creating this, um, spawning this entity type. And collidable is set to true, um, because I want it to be interactable with other things. Uh, I want it to collide with other things, which we'll cover in the next step. So I've done that. Now I should be able to spawn my new entity type. Um, let's do it somewhere here. I'll first do it from code, and then I'll show you how to do it from the tiled map editor. So get game world spawn, we called it temp type, so it has to match exactly that. And we also need to pass in width and height. This is where it will be spawned, and you can put width and height width 70 put height also 70 
because blocks in this game are um, 70 by 70. So that should, emphasis on should, spawn a new brown looking rectangle. Yeah, so that's where it is. <clears throat> right, so this is how you do it from code. Uh, there is also a way to do it from the tiled map editor. So there is a file called level0.tmx, which is not in the Mario module, but is in the FixGL games top level directory. The reason for that is because this thing, developing new level is set to true, which allows us to reload, hot reload our files or levels. So if I open this, if I take this coin, move it to the left, control S for save. Well, actually, I first need to run the game. So the point is that closing and restarting the game takes a lot longer than to move it here, control save, go back to the game, control R to reload. And I can do that to hot reload the file that I'm currently editing, which is a lot faster. So what I wanted to do was um, spawn a new entity type. To do so, go to the object layer, select it, go to insert rectangle, and then select an area which creates a new object with 70 and height 70. If you want, you can change those. Type has to match exactly what you've specified in Mario Factory. So it's easier to just copy and paste because that's how FXGL knows how to create your entity. Control R to reload and here it is, my new entity type. Um, so that's how you can create it. The final step is to add some interaction. So we've added collidable true, which means it can collide, but currently there is no collision handler. So the game doesn't know what to do when things collide with it. If you scroll down to init physics, you will find that there are several collision handlers already defined. What you can do is just copy one of those. For example, collision one time only. That means it will only fire once and the second type, in this case um, temp type, will be disabled for collisions if you're calling this one on collision one time only. So make sure that the thing that you want to disable the collision on comes next. And let's just print something. Um, collision between player and temp entity. Uh, I've changed code, so I have to recompile it. I can't cut really the code, although that would be nice. And I'm pretty sure that's possible one way or another. So yeah, I only collided um, the collision will trigger only once because we said so. I can collide with this thing however many times I want, but this will be triggered only once. Now, if you want the collision to trigger once, but every time it collides, then you're seeking on collision begin rather than on collision one time only. So I'll give you a very short um, crash course on collisions in FXGL. There you go. One, two. Per each collision, it will fire only once during the first frame when the two objects are colliding. There is also on collision, which will fire every frame the collision occurs. So it'll basically spam your terminal with messages because it's occurring on every single frame. And there's also on collision end which fires during the last frame the collision happens. So when the collision finishes, then the code will run. 
So these are the various things that you can do. Um, the reason we can have such concise code is because of this. We're statically importing all methods from the domain-specific uh, language package from FXGL. If you didn't do that, then all you needed to do would be just FXGL dot, and then you have all the methods, you have access to all of those methods. It's just with statically importing them, you don't need to type FXGL dot every time. Also, many things from the previous version of FXGL, which was pre-11, uh, have moved in 11 to the FXGL namespace. So if you do FXGL dot, and even if you don't know what FXGL can do, you should be able to just literally see what methods are available. Um, especially useful for beginners, I'm assuming, because then um, you can kind of know what things you can do with FXGL. Um, yeah, that's that. Uh, so yeah, that will be the end of the tutorial. As for a side note, so this platformer, um, yeah, that one, just currently called Mario, it doesn't even have its own name, is very open for ideas. So if you want to contribute, whether ideas, assets, art, sound effects, code, or anything like that, then feel free to do so. Um, oh yeah, by the way, these are turrets that were um, created by one of our game students. They look pretty cool. So yeah, if you're interested in con contributing anything, literally anything, um, story, uh, maybe even some level design, uh, then feel free to do so. The repository is very accepting and welcoming new contributions, and it's especially beneficial if you're planning on creating a strong portfolio for your um, open source GitHub contributions to public projects. On that note, thanks for watching.